How you doing? My name's Peter and welcome to the basement. So what I have here in front of me today is my Amstrad CPC 6128. And what I want to do is I want to connect it to a three and a half inch disk drive. And the reason I want to do that is so that I can get higher capacity on disks that I can save games and programs and all that kind of stuff to, to make my CPC a little more usable. So what I need is I need the disk drive, I need the CPC, I need a cable to connect both of them together. I need a three and a half inch disc and I need Parados and a way of putting Parados onto my Amstrad. So uh, what I'll do is we'll go over to the test bench there straight away. I'll show you Parados in action. And then afterwards I'll have a chat about all the little pieces and components that are needed to put all this together. So we'll get straight to it. Now, so I'm going to have to get myself sorted up here at my test bench. I've got my Amstrad CPC. I've got my 3.5 inch disk drive. And uh, I'm after joining it to the CPC with little cable like I showed you earlier on that I made up. This is receiving power from this external uh, PC PSU. And I'm after plugging in my Parados version 1.2 on my ROM board into the expansion port on the back of the CPC. So now I should be able to um, access three and a half inch drive and and use it with this setup so we just turn on the system same as normal and uh, we see anyway that we have Parados available to us here it's displayed on the screen first thing and um, so what I can do is I can pop this disk here into three and a half inch drive and I access it as drive B uh, so it'll have a look it tells me that the drive is ready if I catalog it you'll see that there's no files on the disk, but it has 716K free. So I've got a much larger capacity than the 178K that I would have on a three inch drive. Now, um, here, for example, I've got my three inch drive. And if I access my three inch drive, and I cat that, you'll see that I've got space moves. This is a game that I copied over in a previous video. Uh, to demonstrate disk to CDT. Uh, I'll put a link to the video up there if you wish to see it. Now, so what I'll show you how to do is how to transfer the files from drive A to drive B. So um, in order to do that, we will use Parados because we can't actually do any file copying or any, anything like this in this um, locomotive basic thing that we're presented with when we turn on the Amstrad. So um, just a, a quick thing about Parados. What I'm going to show you here with Parados is simply how to format a disk and how to copy files across to it. Um, Parados is a disk operating system. It's capable of an awful lot more than that. So if you're interested in it and you want to explore it a bit further, I will put a link to the Parados manual in the description below. But anyway, in order to get Parados to launch, we do our little command icon here and we type drive. Now, so that brings us into Parados here. Now, if I want to copy files from the A drive to the B drive, for example, first of all, I need to catalog the A drive to see what files are on it. So um, that's pretty much like the cat command we ran there earlier to see what files were on it. But with Parados, what we do is we press Shift and then we press L to log the drive. So it's asking me which drive I wish to log. So I wish to log drive A. So now it will read the contents of drive A and we see the three files that we saw here earlier. So what I want to do is I want to select these three files and then let it know I want to copy them across to the B drive. So in order to select them, what we do is we have to tag the files. That's how it's called within Parados. So we press T in order to tag a file. And as you can see, each time I tag a file, a little asterisk appears beside it. So now I'm after tagging all three files. And in order to copy them, I press Control and I press C. And now it'll ask me, copy all tag files to which drive? So I want to copy them to drive B. That's the drive where I have my three and a half inch drive or my three and a half inch disc inserted. So I press B. And what it's doing now is it's reading from drive A. You can see here that the free buffer is diminishing. That's the memory inside the computer is being filled with the contents of drive A. And it's asking me now to insert the destination disk into drive B and press any key. And I've already put the destination disk or my three and a half inch disk into drive B. So now all I need to do is press any key. 
Now it'll start writing to drive B here. And you see that the free buffer here is clearing. So the, the information on the, um, on the AMS thread that was copied from drive A is now being copied to drive B. So here we are, the copy should be complete at this stage. So we can log drive B in order to see that the files have been moved across. Now you won't see an awful lot of difference here between uh, what's on the screen now, apart from these little asterisks should disappear. But the main thing that you'll see will be different is the information here. This has given us information on the disk that's in drive A. So it's telling us that in drive A, we have got a, a data disk that's single sided with 40 tracks and it has total capacity of 178 kilobytes. Now, when I log drive B, I press shift and L to log and tell it I want to log drive B. It shows me here the three files that we copied across previously. There's no asterisks beside them, but you see here now that the information has changed. It's drive B, the format is ROMDOS D1 because that's what we use to format these. Um, Paradox gives us the option of using a format called ROMDOS D1 or ROMDOS D2. We can use either of those formats for three and a half inch drives. And we've got a total capacity of 716K. So you can see the advantage. There is like um, four times the capacity on a three and a half inch disc as there is on one side of a three inch disc. So um, what I'll do for the moment is I'll exit out of Paradox and uh, we'll see that this has worked. So in order to exit out, I press Control Shift and Escape to reset the Amstrad. I will remove the disk from drive A here and put it over here. And you can see that this here is the three and a half inch disk. I'll pop it back into drive B. And now I select drive B here. It gets the, the drive ready for us. I catalog it. And here are the files that we copied across earlier. And I've got my 664 kilobytes free. Now, in order to run that, I simply type space and I put my run hyphen before it. And uh, it should start up. And here we go, it seems to be working anyway. So this is loading from the three and a half inch disk drive. And there we go. And we will play just to see that it is indeed working. Yeah, it is. <laughs> there we go. So that at least is working. <laughs> I like it out of that. Okay. So there's one other thing that you, you need to know in order to use this in, in the most simplest way. And um, these disks, when you get them, are generally formatted for an IBM computer. So they're, they're, the format that's on them is incompatible with the Amstrad. So they need to be formatted. Uh, to format them with Paradox is, is quite simple. Just simply put the disk into the drive. We go back into Paradox again. And all we need to do is press Shift and F to format. It asks us which drive we wish to format. We're going to format drive B. And it gives us a whole list of different data formats that we can perform on the three and a half inch disk. As I explained before, ROMDOS D1 according to the Paradox manual, is the, the, the best one to choose really between Rondos D1 and Rondos D2 because they offer much larger capacity but they're also logically the closest to the type of format that's performed on a 3-inch disk, so the most compatible with the Amstrad CPC. So what we do is we just go down to Rondos D1 and hit enter. So it asks me should it verify while well formatting and should why not. So it's asking me to insert the disk into drive B and press any key, it's already in there, I press any key. So what it will do is, you see, it starts at 159 tracks. And now what it's doing is it's formatting each track and it's verifying each one as it goes. So what the verify does is, it checks to see if the track is good, that data that will be written to that track will be retained, it won't become corrupted or won't become uh, in, in any way unreadable. So it's, it's worthwhile for the first format, at least, to do it that way. And then you know that your disk is pretty good, uh, well, providing that it, it formats without any errors. So I'll, I'll speed up this little part. And um, that's pretty much the end of this segment because uh, that's, that's all I really wanted to show you is how to copy stuff from one drive to another and how to format the disk. So what I'll do is in the next section, 
we'll have a little chat about the type of drives because there are some incompatibility issues with drives uh, I'll tell you one or two little things about the cable as well which are good to know and um, yeah just just in general a little overall view of, of the whole thing but um there you go so we'll we'll head back over to the other bench so you've seen me run paradox and you've seen the system working and um, i'd just like to point out that this here is the three and a half inch disc drive that i used with the cpc this is a sony mpf 920 drive and it works fine apart from the fact that the actual uh, disc access light isn't accessed properly but apart from that uh, it writes and it reads data without errors so that's good uh, the reason I mention it is that the first drive I used was this guy here it's an Alps electric drive and uh, it didn't actually work properly although it works perfectly on an IBM PC compatible it um it can be accessed by the CPC, but it doesn't actually read the disks properly. And I had a look on the internet, and I'm not the only one to have had this problem with Alps Electric drives. So it's apparently a known thing with Alps Electric. They don't always work with the CPC. So I prefer to point that out just to check, see if your drive will be compatible or not before you start. Um, the second thing that I'd like to point out is to do with the three and a half inch discs that you use. Now, these here are double-sided high density discs, which means that they have a capacity of 1.44 megabytes. And they also, you'll notice, have two holes in them, one on either side. Now, one of them is a write protect. And when the hole is covered, you can obviously format the disc, write to the disc, and uh, delete files and all that kind of thing from the disk when it's not covered uh, the disk is write protected you can only read from the disk the hole on the other side there's no way of covering it it's uh, it's constantly open and the idea behind this is that when it's inserted into your three and a half inch disk drive uh, the three and a half inch disk drive because of this hole will see this as a high density disk so we'll treat it accordingly now the cpc can only work with double-sided, double-density disks. So they would have a capacity of 720 kilobytes. So the way that we fool the drive into thinking that a high-density disk is a double-density disk is by covering this hole. And that I've done with a little piece of scotch or sellotape. And uh, once it's inserted in the drive, it is treated as a double-sided, double-density disk. Now, this is a way of doing it if you can't find any real double-sided double density disks which i couldn't uh, you would be better off it's more stable if you use double-sided double density disks and not this conversion method but this will work as well and um, that's the second thing i wanted to say uh, the third thing is to do with this little cable that i manufactured now this particular modification needs to be done whether you buy a cable or whether you make the cable yourself the uh, three and a half inch disk drive on the IBM PC needs a drive ready signal. And that's actually provided by shorting pins 33 and 34 on the drive. So as the Amstrad CPC doesn't actually provide this signal, we need to force it. So all you need to do is after you've made up your cable or which your cable you've bought, you can um, short pins 33 and 34 and that will enable drive enabled and you'll be able to use the drive. And um, the one other thing that I'd like to say is that with an external disk drive in your CPC, external disk drives were really only designed to be used for backing up data. So basically the way that was, was you would have your Amstrad CPC 6128 and you would buy an external disk drive, three inch disk drive for it. And then you could back up your disks onto that. But uh, it was never really designed to run software. And the reason for this is that there's a lot of software for the Amstrad CPC. And if you try to run it from drive B, what it'll do is it'll start the program, but then when it goes searching for a second file, it won't look at drive B anymore to look at drive A. And it won't actually find the file because obviously the file is in drive B and therefore 
you won't be able to run that program. Now, there is a way, there are actually two ways around this. And uh, the way I would recommend is to install what's called an ABBA switch, which has nothing to do with the musical group from the 70s, but it's an ABBA switch. And what it basically does is it changes, swaps your drives around. So your external drive becomes drive A and your internal drive becomes drive B. And that way you can access uh, your files your, on your three and a half inch external drive as if it were the internal drive. Now, as I say, the ABBA switch is the best way to do it. It's a modification that needs to be made to the motherboard of your CPC. It involves cutting one track, joining a couple of points with, um, with bodge wires, and also installing two capacitors and the switch so that you can switch to have the external as A or as B and vice versa for the internal. Um, the second way of doing that is pretty much like we did with a uh, pin 33 and 34 here to provide drive enable there are two other pins off the top of my head i don't remember what they are now but if they're shorted together it will achieve the same result so if you put a switch to those two so that you can short and uh, unshort them with the switch uh, you'll be able to assign a drive to drive a or drive b but the problem with that and the reason i wouldn't do it and would not recommend it is that everything i've read about it says although it works when you power up your cpc the switch must be in the position that makes the internal drive drive a and the external drive b once the system is turned on you can flip the switch to change the drives around if by accident you start the system with the switch the other way having the external drive as drive A and the internal drive as drive B, you run the potential risk of damaging the CPC. So um, for, for a mod like that, which is a simple fix on this, but a potential of actually breaking your CPC, I wouldn't recommend that mod whatsoever. So um, that's pretty much all I have to say on the the use of um of a three and a half inch disc on your amstrad cpc if you like this video like it uh, if you didn't like it don't like it uh, think about subscribing too if you would because i've got 44 subscribers at the moment and uh, it'd be great to have another few you know kind of more people come to the party and uh, what we'll do is uh uh, I've got plenty more videos in the pipeline. They get made as as we speak more. Well, they're not. This one's getting made as we speak, but there's there's um there's a couple more in the pipeline, and I suppose to get made as you're watching this, and uh, they'll be up soon enough. So in the meantime, take care of yourselves and those close to you, and I'll talk to you in the next video. So see ya and bye bye.